Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> I would also parallel this very well with Mark. Uh, Mark's account of you've got the rich young ruler, you've got um, it's it's very much the same in Mark's gospel. Guys, this is about greatness. This is about what your life's worth is. This is about what you pursue in your life and what you're going to do with it. <clears throat> and essentially, um, where your treasure is there, your heart will also be. The rich young ruler um, had a legitimate question. He said, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus, at first, puts him kind of in his place, and he says, well, you know, how do you read the law? Well, you know, and then he, he lists off a couple things, you know. He, basically, he summarizes the law when he says, love thy neighbor as thyself. If I was to summarize, or really just paraphrase something from the Bible, um, if you want to summarize all of the law, it is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. Like these, all the law and the prophets hold on those two commandments. It's the culmination of the law. All of us, if we have asked, if someone asks us, have you kept the law fully? Our answer is no, we can't. We cannot do it. There's not a single person on the face of the earth who can perfectly love God, perfectly love their neighbor as their self. Um, and so really the, the ruler's answer is not very truthful when he says, all of these I have kept since, a young, since I was a young boy. That's, that's not really a truthful answer. Legalistically, perhaps, but in the, in the spirit of the law, to truly honor the Father, that, that cannot be kept by a human. There is only one who could have possibly done it. Well, who did it? <laughs> Jesus Christ, the true Son of God. And so, Jesus, he, he kind of, he sees where the man is coming from in his heart. Um, and he says to you, if you want to be perfect, go sell everything you have, give to the poor, then you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Um, turn to Luke Chapter 12. Luke 12. I'm going to get a little closer here. 14 through, I'm sorry, 32 through 34. Luke 12, 32 through 34. This is what Jesus says. After he's had a discussion about where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. After he's had a discussion about stop pursuing earthly things, pursue the things above. He says this, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fade, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Do you see the parallel in Jesus' teaching in Luke 12 and Matthew 19? So all you have, give to the poor. And you'll have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. Nothing takes precedence, or nothing takes precedence over following Christ. There's no other greater treasure. And to the, to the young ruler who had much, who had his heart and mind fixed on earthly things, he tells him to get rid of his idol. Possessions themselves are not bad, and wealth, themselves, wealth is not necessarily a bad thing. <clears throat> but as but one it is raised up and it becomes what we pursue with our lives, that there's, there's really no life in it, to be honest with you. Remember what Jesus said. He said, what profits a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his very self? What can man give in exchange for his soul? It is only when we lose our lives in Christ that we truly are able to find it. And really, we're faced with a very difficult question, and this is the question that Peter wrestled with. He exclaims, we left everything to follow you. We left everything. We left our nets. We left our families. Now they could still, they still interacted with their families. They still went and saw their families. We know that Jesus actually healed um, Simon Peter's mother-in-law. It's not like they just ran away from their families, but they were devoted to following Christ. And Peter rightly says, well, we've left everything. What is there for us? The question is, how, how serious are you about following Christ? When he calls you, what are you willing to leave behind? Take hold of life that is truly life. Turn to, uh, here's another passage. Turn to First Timothy chapter 6.